Okay guys, it's me again. It's the, uh, Chad from Six Blog. Just want to do a quick little video show you my Hexamed Solo Plus tarp. Um, as some of you may remember, um, I recently had the Hexamed Solo Plus tent and I sold it when I got my Yama Mountain Gear uh, single wall sear form tent. Um, to be quite honest, when I got rid of this tent, I knew that I was going to want to get another one uh, just simply because I love the tent so much. Uh, the only reason or what really made me decide to go ahead and just get rid of the uh, the tent was the mesh floor on it. Um, whenever it was wet or it was rainy or something like that, the mesh floor was good about picking up a lot of, uh, of just water and mud if it was set up in a dirty spot rather than on the grass like it is now. So I went ahead and sold it, which did help me kind of fund the uh, Yama tent. Um, then I saved up a little bit more money and I bought just the tarp. I uh, just will say that in a couple of weeks I am going to place an order for the Hexanet, uh, the Solo Plus Hexanet, which goes inside it. Um, and I'm going to give that a try. But anyway, just wanted to show you what I got here. Uh, like I said, this is the Solo Plus. It is with the beak. Um, I ordered this initially in green and uh, I called Joe about two weeks or so after I placed the order and said, you know what, if, uh, if it's not too late, I'd really love to stick with the white Cuban fiber, uh, just because I like the white so much. Um, and he said, no problem. He said, actually, he said, uh, I'll tell you what, he said, I just got back from the uh, ADZ PCTKO. I had to make sure I got that right. Uh, but anyway, the annual day zero Pacific Crest Trail kickoff, of course, they were there and he had this prototype not a prototype but he had the display so he said i say what i got a display with a beak exactly what you want if you want it um it's yours i said well i said if there's nobody else in line to get one i said i'd be more than happy to go ahead and take it and he said then it's yours he put it in the mail and it was to me in about two days later um uh, of course this one is completely taped uh they did tape all the seams on it um, the only thing I will say that I went back and did is at the uh, five corners here. Um, it, well, this is a bad example here. But right here, if you can see those two stitches, uh, they didn't tape any of those. And those are actually the stitches. Well, I can't bend it in inside out. But those are the stitches that hold the little loop on the inside um, to attach the ground sheet or the internet or whatever it is that you may decide to attach. Um, those weren't taped over uh, and it's not really a big issue but I went ahead and I put a little piece of tape over each one of those just because uh, that that's uh, where it's been sewed whenever it rains that water will just kind of go through there it'll soak that loop and whatever's attached to the loop it'll just continue running down that so I went ahead and I taped it on the uh, four corners and then on the back back here other than that everything else was already taped um, one other thing I did, I made this front line here. I made it just a little bit longer than what was on it. Um, I, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. I feel like I like the pitch better whenever I set it up with a little bit longer line because the shorter line was kind of coming down at more of an angle. Um, so that, that's just me. If I get to a campsite and I have to uh, shorten the line, of course, I can just tie another loop in it somewhere and, and use it like that. Also, one other thing that I did here is I've got the, uh, the beak. Normally the way this works, whenever they recommend doing it, is you would actually loop that down there at the stake. Uh, but what I did is I just used a little piece of uh, the same spectra cord. Uh, this was actually a piece of uh, cord from... Uh, my other, my tent, um, it was one of the corner tie outs, uh, but it's right here. And then that is just uh, not really tied in a knot, but just whatever that knot is. I can't remember, slip knot or whatever. But it's on there. So that gives me my, my length since I did make this line longer. And then also what I did is I just put another piece of cord here. That way whenever I'm under my tent and I take it loose, that piece of cord is laying under there. And it's easy for me to grab it and pull it and then I can just uh, connect it back and it's pretty easy to do. I can't do it right now with just one hand. But anyway, let me go ahead and I'm gonna raise this up here. I 
Um, another thing I did is this will focus. I think it's going to focus. There we go. So you can tell I cut those little mitten hook, hooks just a little bit. Uh, that way it's easier to get uh, looped around that. I even did it on that one there. And uh, so anyway, right now I've got my Bora baby under there. Uh, that's my Bora baby. And then I've got my Neo Air up under there. I've got my Goose Feet Gear pillow and my Exped Ultra Light pillow inside it. And then my uh, 50 degree and lighting equipment quilt. And I have a trip coming up in a couple of, well, next weekend. Um, and I'm thinking about taking this set up the way it is. A little bit's getting stuck on it. Uh, but anyway, I'm thinking about taking this set up the way it is. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to take the boar bivy because uh, in the past I've experienced some fairly bad condensation inside it. Uh, it's got an M50 top, and I found that that M50, the newer M50, doesn't breathe quite as well as I'd hoped it did. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out something about that. But at the moment, uh, that's what I'm looking at bringing. I may end up uh, leaving that behind, just taking a ground sheet. Uh, I could take my MLD bug bivy, or I could just take a whole new tent, different tent. I'm not really sure at this point what I'm going to do, but this is what I'm looking at. Um, I know right now there's a lot of mosquitoes out. Um, I will say on that trail that we're going to be hiking, we're not going to have a whole lot of downtime. Most of our time is going to be up and hiking. So I'm hoping by the time we would actually come into camp, um, I wouldn't need too much bug protection. Um, but I don't know. It's just kind of up in the air. Like I said, if I had the, uh, the Solo Plus internet tent, I would take it for sure. Um, but I'll have it for my next trip. But anyway, guys, that's just a quick look at my Hexamid Solo Plus tarp. Looking forward to using it again because, like I said, I really did enjoy uh, my tent version of this. Uh, the only thing, like I said, was that, that, under, that mesh that went underneath the floor. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Whenever it was dry, especially, and if I set it up really on grass, it was really good about not getting dirty, uh, in my experience. And even on hard packed dirt, it wasn't too bad. Um, the bad thing was, like I said, is whenever it rained, um, of course, all the, the water would roll off the edges and then it would splatter. And if I was set up on a hard packed dirt area, uh, that mud and stuff would just splatter up onto the mesh and it was kind of a pain for me uh, the next morning to pack up so but anyway let's see if you can see it here how much room is you can see how wide the boar bivy is inside there but anyway guys that's my hexamid see you later